Good day, everyone. I'm Dr. John Ward, Director of the Coalition for Global Hepatitis Elimination at the Task Force for Global Health. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you uh, to our uh, fourth edition of our Hep Test webinar series, where we examine um, different uh, challenges in scaling up hepatitis testing and linkage to care um, to advance progress toward elimination and the various strategies to overcome those uh, barriers so that we can uh, prevent a premature mortality among people living with hepatitis B and hepatitis C and prevent transmission um, to others. Uh, our previous editions uh, have focused on um, um, testing for hepatitis during the uh, COVID pandemic response, uh, a global tour of hepatitis C testing strategies, looking at uh, strategies for hepatitis B testing of pregnant women. And then today we're going to look at hepatitis B testing um, more, uh, more broadly. Um, all of this information uh, of all the webinars uh, are, is available on our website at globalhep.org, uh, including uh, the presentations, um, the recording of each presentation separately on video, um, and then um, a, a summary uh, report. Um, um, as far, please um, place your questions and comments in the, in the chat function here uh, at the bottom of the screen so that we can get to those after the uh, presentations and we'll get to those as many as possible. Uh, for the questions that we're unable to uh, answer during the webinar, we seek to add, uh, to bring that together in that summary report I mentioned so that uh, those, um, those questions are answered and, and made available to you, um, albeit at a later, uh, albeit a later date. Um, uh, at this stage, I'll turn it over to the uh, moderator of our, uh, today's um, uh, session, who will be um, uh, um, introducing the speakers. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Neil Gupta, who's the Chief Technical Officer of the Coalition. And I'll turn it over to you, Neil. Thank you so much, John, and uh, welcome everybody to the webinar. Uh, we appreciate your time uh, dedicated to this uh, very critical topic of, of hepatitis B testing. Um, Lindsay, if you could advance to the next slide, please. Um, I wanted to give just a few slides of, of introduction here, particularly for those who might be newer to this topic of, of hepatitis B testing and why it's so important and, and critical in the, Afri um, in the African region. Next slide, please. So uh, here we're looking at a global map of um, hepatitis B uh, cases worldwide. Um, these are estimates uh, across the different regions. But as you can see here, uh, the African continent, or at least the sub-Saharan African region in the Afro region, um, comprises about a quarter of the um, uh, estimated hepatitis B chronic infections worldwide, uh, with 60 million infections um, uh, across the continent. Um, and on the right, you can see a bar graph showing the uh, hepatitis B surface antigen prevalence by region. And here we've highlighted in red um, the African region prevalence, which is above 6% uh, here, which you can see uh, is amongst um, the world's highest uh, in terms of regional uh, hepatitis B surface antigen prevalence. Next slide, please. So across all regions, we know that in the cascade of care, there's a dramatic uh, drop off when we move from a uh, number of uh, estimated hepatitis B chronic infections uh, and those that are actually diagnosed and aware of their status. Um, so you can see here, uh, if we look at the uh, 2030 target of 90% of those that are infected are actually diagnosed, um, we have a, a, a huge gap in um, uh, individuals knowing their status or diagnosed, and then an even larger gap of those being linked to care um, for treatment, um, and then onwards to viral suppression. Although we don't have a cure for hepatitis B uh, or, or therapeutics that result in functional cure of hepatitis B, uh, we do know that suppression with tenofovir-based therapy can result in a 50 to 60 percent decline in mortality or severe outcomes, um, and so it's particularly critical um, in terms of treatment. 
In addition, we know that uh, treatment with tenofovir-based therapy or antivirals uh, can also dramatically reduce the vertical transmission of hepatitis B, which is the main driver of, of incidence in these regions. Um, so testing is, is a, a, indeed a critical gap here and one that needs to be addressed um, across the globe. Next slide, please. Now, if we look at the uh, recommended interventions or, or core interventions for hepatitis B prevention um, and management uh, globally as uh, endorsed by the WHO, uh, we could see uh, low coverage of, of several interventions um, uh, across the regions. Um, but if we uh, focus on the African region coverage of, of key interventions, um, if you look in the second row here, uh, hepatitis B, uh, PMTCT or prevention of mother to child transmission, particularly with the birth dose birth dose of um, uh, first uh, um, vaccination for newborn um, babies within the first 24 or 48 hours of life, uh, we see a dramatically low coverage of that intervention at 10%. And then if you move down to section five uh, towards the bottom, the percent of hepatitis B um, infected individuals that are diagnosed is less than 1%. And with those types of numbers, we really cannot mount a critical response uh, to uh, decreasing the, um, the incidence or moving towards elimination um, uh, or uh, finding those patients who are already infected, uh, perhaps before childhood vaccination was introduced and making sure they're linked um, and treated appropriately. Next slide, please. So with that, I want to turn it over um, to the speakers that we've uh, assembled for you today. And uh, those speakers were actually chosen um, because they're, uh, they comprise clinicians, uh, academics, and, and researchers who are on the front lines of implementing hepatitis B testing, of finding those missing millions um, in the African region. And we pose these questions to them of, of who is currently being tested in your country and who should be tested. Where are those entry points for testing and where can additional patients be tested? And how is testing currently being conducted? What types of methodologies are being used? Uh, what techniques, what laboratory processes? Um, who's financing those and how can we engage more relevant stakeholders in that process? Um, we really wanted to understand the reality and the, um, the current situation of hepatitis B testing and how that could be modified, enhanced, and improved um, in the years to come. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first speaker, um, who's Professor Ponciano Ochama. Uh, he's very well known uh, around the world as a leader in this area. Uh, he's a professor of medicine and hepatologist at Makerere University in Kampala. Um, so over to you, Professor Ponciano. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, the organizers of this uh, meeting for asking me to make this presentation on public health approach for national HBV testing and treatment programs. And in this case, in Uganda, I will start by basically telling you about the overview of the burden of hepatitis B in this country. Uganda has been highly endemic for hepatitis B virus infection. We've had so far two national uh, zero surveys in this country. The first one was in 2004, and uh, this reported population average of 10% of chronic hepatitis B. And in 2016, another uh, survey was conducted showing a, a prevalence of 4.1% again in the population. In both uh, surveys, the prevalence varied from region to region and um, the highest uh, uh, prevalence was seen in the north uh, and with the lowest in the south and especially this, uh, the south uh, western region of the country. And uh, there has been, up to now, we still do not have any clear data on morbidity and mortality uh, of hepatitis B in this country, but we are now beginning to work on this and probably next time we are able to report something uh, to you. These actually show the two uh, surveys which were conducted uh, in the country. And as you can see, there is that north 
uh, south gradient in both um, surveys with the highest uh, distribution being in the northern part of this country. But Uganda has also had several milestones uh, regarding viral hepatitis B, and this was because of that high prevalence uh, that was noted earlier on. But initially in the year 2002, Uganda launched the pentavalent vaccine as part of the expanded program for immunization where the vaccine is given at 6, 10, and 14 weeks post delivery. And in 2011, Uganda launched the National Health Worker Vaccination Program, uh, where it became mandatory that all health workers get vaccinated against hepatitis B. Uh, uh, and whether it, in private or in public uh, settings, in 2015, Uganda launched the massive nationwide testing of adolescents and adults uh, in a phased manner. And this started in areas uh, which uh, were highly endemic for hepatitis B, and that was in the north and northeastern part of Uganda. And this eventually went into the east, west, and uh, recently we just concluded uh, with the central region. Up to now, close to 4 million uh, persons were, have been screened with about 300,000 infected uh, persons identified. And the aim of this, of course, uh, massive uh, nationwide testing was so that the, all those who were surface antigen negative would be taken through catch-up vaccination, and all those who were positive would be linked to care. And as, as I talk now, about 4,500 persons are on treatment for hepatitis B in the country. We developed the guidelines for prevention, testing, care, and treatment of hepatitis B, and this was actually completed and launched in the year 2019. And this um, guideline has, has its structures uh, for prevention, uh, for testing, and uh, linkage to care, and treatment. And then uh, the others included uh, chronic care, especially for those who are not uh, eligible for treatment, as those who are usually uh, eligible for treatment are treated and they, they tend to be followed up more closely if they don't get lost to follow up. And then the, the other aspect was the impact. For testing, um, all persons really can get tested whenever they would want to be tested. And this testing can be done in government facilities or even private facilities. Priority, of course, in government facilities is given to those on the priority list, uh, which I'm going to, uh, to mention after this. And a massive screening of adolescents, as I mentioned, was uh, conducted. And this was actually conducted in government facilities. I just want to say that the private units, of course, will provide testing at a fee, which is usually about three uh, US dollars per testing. And, and that is really the rapid testing, uh, which I'm going again to talk about a little bit. All testing in government facilities have been free of charge to those who are being tested. And testing is purely voluntary. All persons uh, with symptomatic liver disease in all health units are actually routinely tested for hepatitis B surface antigen so that we can know what is happening uh, to, to them, whether hepatitis B is the cause or not. Um, so in the policy, uh, the target population, which I mentioned as the priority list, have included health workers, students undertaking health-related health courses, like nurses and, and doctors, pregnant women, people living with HIV or other sexually transmitted infections, household contacts of uh, persons who are infected, uh, sexual contacts of people with chronic hepatitis B, armed forces, the police and the army, prisoners, sicklers or other patients who frequently require blood and blood products, multiple sexual partners, uh, uh, sexual workers, uh, people living with uh, people who inject uh, drugs and men who have sex with men. These are the persons who are on the, on the priority list. In other words, when if testing has to be conducted, these are the people who should be 
really uh, tested whenever they are, if there is any opportunity to have them uh, tested. Uh, and and uh, uh, when persons get tested, they are linked to care. And now here, I am showing you the algorithm that we have been using for the treatment uh, for linkage to care. And um, these have included uh, the surface antigen test, and if it is positive, the assumption is that this is chronic hepatitis B, and I think generally that is what it is like. Uh, and so we run the blood count, liver function tests, uh, and of course HIV is mandatory. Uh, and then we compute the FPRI, uh, HBV viral load is uh, actually uh, currently tested for in Uganda um, for free. Um, and so using these uh, categories, the patients are, are graded into four uh, categories. Uh, category one are those who you will have to treat um, uh, with or without viral load anyway. And these are the persons with cirrhosis and, a and or APRI uh, score more than two. Category two are those who are eligible for um, I mean, uh, these are the persons who have HIV. Those are automatically eligible for treatment. Fortunately, uh, because of the test and treat policy for HIV, these, pa these patients usually just get treated anyway. Unfortunately, they are put on uh, two medicines, active against hepatitis B and HIV as well. Uh, so they are taken care of a little bit better than others. We have category three, those persons who have APRI score less than two. ALT are persistently abnormal, and we are doing three values two months apart. And, and so at least we have two values ele with elevated uh, ALT, and uh, we cannot explain the reason why the ALT is elevated. Elevated, for example, they're not taking a lot of alcohol, uh, and viral load of more than 20,000. These are people that we actually treat. Uh, and um, by the category four, are those ones who do not fall in any of the uh, three categories, and they are usually monitored annually. And this is similar, very similar almost to what we do uh, with um, what we have with it in the WHO guideline. So the testing modalities, usually, again, the surface antigen is the initial test. Uh, and this is done in the government or private facilities. Uh, rapid tests uh, are used. Uh, in the country, we have got the SD BioLine, the Orchid or VeroCheck, and then the Astra. These are the ones that are actually recommended by government uh, to be done, uh, to be used for testing for hepatitis uh, B surface antigen. Now, all those who test positive for surface antigen, irrespective where they are tested from, they are usually referred to regional referral uh, hospitals where further investigations are done. And uh, these hospitals actually have what we call hepatitis B clinics. Uh, these patients basically go there and uh, they are seen by the clinicians. And when they reach there, the tests which are done include those indicated blood count, liver function tests, renal function tests, and the hepatitis B viral load. Now, the viral load is actually done at one center in Uganda, which is the Central Public Health Laboratory, which is under Ministry of Health. And samples are taken by courier from all uh, regional hospitals in the country and they, they are taken to that very lab. Um, and this has been used for HIV as well. So this, uh, we were piggybacking on this HIV uh, system to also help with the transportation of uh, uh, samples for hepatitis B. And the results are usually out within two weeks on dashboards. And uh, every center that has sent uh, samples received their centers, their sample results. Uh, within two weeks, and they're able to uh, share it with the patient. Then all persons who have tested positive for hepatitis B surface antigen and are at the care centers, at the regional centers, uh, they are all, um, they, are, they are allowed at least two hepatitis B viral uh, load tests per year. And this is very critical because we use this for monitoring 
the response for treatment, especially in those who are really on treatment. So this is basically the packaging of the of the samples for the hepatitis B viral load. Reporting and linkage to care. These patients uh, usually, when they reach those regional centers, they 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 get a post test counseling. Uh, many times at the various sites where testing is being done, uh, you know the the, there is no very good testing, and that is a challenge for us. But once they reach uh, the regional centers, the post-test counseling is done, and the patient from there is sent to the clinician uh, where enrollment takes place, and, and then the results of the, the assessment to decide whether they really require uh, treatment or not is done at that point. But even those who do not require treatment, they are automatically, uh, you know, put on uh, schedules for regular monitoring. Um, so I will now talk a, a little bit about hepatitis B in pregnancy. Now again, it is an algorithm which I want to share again. You know, there is the this essence of hepatitis B, HIV, and syphilis triple elimination program. And this is what is actually put in our guidelines. And so for all uh, those uh, mothers who are uh, surface antigen positive, we run their viral loads and we are running this viral load. We do the e-antigen and the viral load testing and we use the same courier mechanism to actually send the samples to the central public health laboratory. And um, we initiate uh, prophylactic treatment at 24 weeks of gestation, but can be considered at the earliest contact. And this is usually done uh, in uh, all those patients uh, who are e antigen positive and more than uh, 200,000 international units of, of the vi per male of the virus. And we discontinue this treatment um, at the end of three months. Um, and after completion of this, uh, after uh, discontinuing the treatment, the patients or the mothers are monitored for 8, 12, 24 weeks, and then annually we keep monitoring them with viral load at six months and then 12 months. Now they, they join into the regular uh, care like the others. Now, of course, for mothers who anyway, from the very beginning, uh, um, have, have indications for treatment, as is listed in the categories. They are started on the treatment, and they are now, you know, treated and followed up uh, for 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 life um, while they are on this treatment. And this is what we are following in the uh, in in the guidelines. Now, the challenges of this is uh, first of all we are having some issues uh, with the test kits. We do not have adequate test kits. And although this is a requirement uh, at the various sites, including private and public uh, hospitals and health units, we do not have adequate kits. And the, the areas where we did the massive uh, testing, not everybody got tested, and uh, but we've not been able to get back uh, to do mop-up testing to actually get the numbers, uh, the number of people who are actually who could be uh, enrolled onto care into care. Then uh, we have a challenge with the birth dose vaccine uh, in our facilities. Currently, actually, we do not. Although it is in the guideline, we are not having any any um, uh, significant uh, birth doses in in the in the um, health facilities. And so this is quite frustrating to a number of people because this would be one of the best ways of curbing uh, the transmission of this uh, infection. We have also issues with infrastructure at the referral sites, the HBV clinics. We have issues with human resource and lab capacity and sometimes even space where we are supposed to see these patients and the patients uh, are there for uh, some patients get lost to follow up. In fact, a number of the patients that were in the, in the um, screening program, a number of them eventually 
those who reached eventually dropped out and some people did not actually even reach the centers. For example, in one of the districts in Northwestern Uganda, where 218,000 persons were screened and 14,176 were found positive. When we tracked the record from the district offices, we could only find 2,209 in, in, in uh, being traced in care. And some of those, even the 2,209, some of them were lost, got lost to follow up. And this is, these are actually big challenges. So what are the operational research opportunities? First of all, we want to look at the issue of loss of follow-up. And the, this loss to follow-up is a big issue uh, for us. And uh, using, uh, we are thinking that in those areas um, where HIV infrastructure has been existing for some time, moreover with the donor funding, uh, where um, health teams, uh, village health teams, goes to the they, they go to the villages to look for these persons who have not come back to the clinic. They, they, we are saying, why don't we uh, get them the same team to go and also talk about this uh, hepatitis B, and then so that we can begin to get some of those people uh, back. Uh, radio talk shows could be uh, done. And this would certainly be very helpful. A number of patients presenting with advanced liver diseases post screening, you know, we see them in the hospitals uh, sometimes, um, not systematic research uh, being done on those. We think that we need to now do this research systematically so that we can get uh, the, the, the national uh, burden of uh, chronic liver disease due to hepatitis B. We are also trying to see. Uh, the possibility of really integrating HBV care in the HIV clinic because there is, they, they seem to be well funded. The HIV clinics are well funded. And, and this should be able to give us a good outcome. Introduction of varieties B birth dose and testing the effectiveness of the guideline algorithms on PMTCT would be something, again, really that we need to look at. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and again, thank you for inviting me for this presentation. I'd like to. Thank you very much, Professor, for the excellent um, presentation on um, the policy and programming in Uganda. Um, there are already quite a few questions of, uh, that have been posed uh, to you in the chat box, as well as the um, question and answer. If you could uh, work on uh, providing some answers to those requests in the uh, chat box and question and answer, I think it'll um, spur some more discussion in the subsequent presentations. Um, Professor, if you're, if you're able to come on camera, we could just ask uh, one follow-up question here. Professor, are you available to come off mute and on camera? Yes, I don't know if you are able to see me. Yes, we can see you. Thank you so much for, uh, for the excellent presentation. Um, Professor, I think there were a few questions that have already been posed in the, in the chat box for you. Um, but one, uh, I think the, the general theme there is that uh, there's an impressive policy in place in Uganda, but apparently, uh, you know, there's a gap with uh, achieving that policy in some of the programming. So I think some of the questions were uh, in regards to how do you reach rural populations or what might the coverage of these free services be um, for those rural, rural populations living in Uganda? So what's the actual coverage and what's the actual availability um, for individuals um, you know, in rural areas to uh, access testing uh, for hepatitis B? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I would say, the, um, first of all, when we were doing the national uh, screening, it was actually done at, uh, at grassroots level almost, uh, you know, everybody uh, could go and would be tested. But as I mentioned in the presentation, the, the areas where the 
uh, mop up, I mean, where the screening took place, uh, the areas which were left, there was no mop up, um, uh, you know, screening. But testing is still being done, but certainly at much lower rates in the in the different health units, especially in the district and regional hospitals. So at lower health units, it's, it's not it's not as well covered uh, compared to the uh, you know higher health facilities. Um, so, uh, but in all those cases, wherever the screening took place uh, for patients or those who tested positive, who, who that could be contacted, who were able to get their samples and they were taken to the national uh, uh, testing center for the viral load. But then some of them after that, uh, you know, couldn't be traced again, uh, even, even if they had the results at the centers. So it was a little bit tricky uh, to, to, it's a little bit difficult to get those ones back. And that's why we are saying we need to get back and begin to trace those people who tested positive and that we can see now in the health facilities. As a follow-up to that question, uh, Professor, is there a registry in Uganda for all um, individuals who test hepatitis B surface antigen positive? Yes, they, they are all entered into the health information management system of the Ministry of Health. And so we are able to actually get that information from the Ministry of Health records. And uh, at local levels, we get them from the district health officers, uh, the offices in the district health office, where we actually get all, from there, they actually send them to the Ministry of Health. Yeah. Wonderful. So we're going to move on to the next presentation, but Professor, if you could take just a moment and um, t uh, look at the chat box and the question and answer, I think there's uh, many members of the audience who would love to hear your experience in Uganda. And I would encourage the other speakers, even if your presentations have not been uh, displayed yet, to go ahead and, and respond with your experience in, in uh, the country that you'll be presenting on. Uh, uh, while the other pre presentations are, are ongoing. I think it'll spur more chat. So uh, we can move on to the next presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Pontiano. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is and, um, I'm Lindsay, I'm, I'm sorry, we can't see the slides here. If you could just move to the the slides on the shared screen. And I'll introduce um, our next speaker. It's Dr. Hannah Abera from Addis Ababa, um, who's a hepatologist at St. Paul's Hospital um, at Millennium Medical College. So thank you, uh, Professor Hanna, and the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hannah Abera. I'm from Tiaga, St. Paul's Hospital Millennium Medical College. I am a gastroenterologist and a hepatologist. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Coalition for Global Hepatitis Elimination Program for inviting me to be among one of the speakers on this platform. So today I'll be presenting on models of testing and uh, treatment of hepatitis B and high prevalence setting in Sub-Saharan Africa. So my outline of presentation will be an overview of hepatitis B burden in Ethiopia and the tools of testing policies and the target population. And to see the Testing in the different testing in three points, as well as uh, the different testing modalities. I would also go through the hepatitis B reporting and linkage uh, to systems and uh, evaluation of hepatitis B virus uh, or treatment and the different uh, challenges which are encountered during the care of hepatitis B virus uh, patients. And finally, I would suggest some hepatitis B operational research opportunities for the future. So when we when I start with the overview of hepatitis B burden, as you all know, Ethiopia is uh, located in the Horn of Africa, which is the second most populous nation with uh, 109 million population size reported in 2018. So ba based on the World Health ranking on liver disease mortality in 2017, Ethiopia stood 42nd uh, in the globe. So when you see the burden of cirrhosis in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, there is a report that there is a rise by 57% uh, in two decades time in Sub-Saharan Africa, among which uh, the cause of cirrhosis and hepatitis B contributed in 35% of the cases, followed by alcohol, which is 18%, and uh, hepatitis C virus in 70%. Uh, 
when we come to Ethiopia and say things, the magnitude of the disease burden caused by viral hepatitis in general and hepatitis B in particular is, remains unknown. And based on a systematic review and the meta-analysis, which was done in 2016, it reported an overall prevalence of 7.4%. But based on the unpublished technical report by the Ethiopian Public Health Institute in 2017, it came up with the national zero prevalence of 9.4, which is high. So in this technical report, it has also shown clearly regional variation in the zero prevalence of the virus with the Alpha region uh, having the highest uh, zero prevalence rate of around 28%, followed by Gambella and as well as the uh, Somalia region. So this depicts the need for uh, intensifier support of the regions who having the highest burden of the virus in the country. So uh, when you see some of uh, when you go through the uh, burden of the virus in general, many of the studies were conducted in 1970s and 80s. And Professor Saka Edamariam, Edamariam Saka, who conducted the, this uh, study in 1977, reported that liver disease accounted for 12% of all hospital admissions, as well as 31% of hospital mortality in Ethiopia. And in the same year, Professor Edamariam Saka also conducted a prospective study among 100 patients with hepatocellular carcinoma, in which case 50% of them were hepatitis B surface antigen carriers. And in 2016, it was also reported that more than 60% of chronic liver diseases, as well as 80% uh, of hepatitis cellular carcinoma in Ethiopia and in the in Kenya are reported to be due to those infections. So in, in 2015, a retrospective study was conducted over two years period in the um, Prambasa Specialized Hospital among 51 patients with hepatitis cellular carcinoma. So in this case, uh, both hepatitis B and C virus contributed in half of the cases. And our research partner in Hara, which is located in southeastern part of Ethiopia, which is fully funded by the Norwegian government, uh, conducted a cross-sectional study in two public hospitals. And among all the LD patients, chronic hepatitis B was because of chronic CLD in 36.7% of the cases. So when you see the hepatitis B testing policies and target populations in Ethiopia, the Ethiopian Minister of Health developed a very nicely written national strategic plan for viral hepatitis control of viral hepatitis with different with aims, strategies, and as well as different intervention areas and different uh, clearly put targets to be achieved by the year 2020, including the implementation of routine viral um, hepatitis viral testing and to integrate these testing programs with existing HIV, STD, and TB clinics, and to add it to our antenatal care clinic service as well. And there was also the aim to provide testing in hospitals and regional laboratories, as well as to expand it further to health centers and private sectors. So in 2016, the Minister of Health also developed national viral hepatitis treatment guideline. In this guideline, it recommends to give priority for screening for what are in those groups which are called high risk groups, as listed in, the, in this slide. So, uh, based on our finding from our chronic hepatitis B treatment program in our in St. Paul's Hospital, what we observed was uh, there were three major uh, hepatitis B testing in three points. And patients were being referred from symptomatic patients were being referred from hospitals, but physicians and uh, other um, pregnant mothers who were uh, referred from antenatal care clinics during the routine follow-ups, and voluntary blood donors were being referred from uh, blood banks. So these, are, these were found to be the major entry points for hepatitis B testing, as uh, we have seen that um, in antenatal care clinic is a major entry point. So when we see the antenatal care coverage um, in Ethiopia, and, uh, based on the report in 2016, as you can see from this map, uh, the blue shaded ones are the lowest antenatal care coverage areas, antenatal care uh, visits of uh, four antenatal care visits. This is uh, uh, the percentage is as low as 12 to 16 percent, but the highest uh, antenatal care visits, which is shaded in red, it is pinpointed in the center, this is a capital city at the ranges between 65 to 89 percent. 
as you as we can see from the bar graphs, when we see the utilization of antenatal care in, in antenatal care services in Ethiopia uh, to the rest of the globe, the blue shaded ones are uh, single antenatal care visits, the red ones are four antenatal care visits. So Ethiopia uh, clearly has been shown uh, lost uh, antenatal care service utilization. So one of the entry points for prevention of mother to child transmission, which is uh, administration of birth it will depend on the institutional delivery of pregnant mothers. So from the 2016 report, the regional prevalence of institutional delivery was reported to be highest in the capital city of Isawa, followed by Tigray and the uh, Hara regions. The rest of the town, uh, regional uh, cities of the regions, have uh, institutional delivery rate below 30%. So this is way beyond the touch of the target uh, of elimination of hepatitis B virus as a public major public constraint. So when it comes to the hepatitis, hepatitis B virus testing modalities, the Ethiopian National Guideline recommends use of either rapid diagnostic tests or enzyme immunoassays as screening tests. For those who are tested positive, it recommends for further viral load testing. And this testing model, uh, testing usually takes place in healthcare settings, and for these services, patients are required to pay unless they are uh, living as free patients in the public sectors, in which case they will be uh, given uh, free of charge if the services are available. So uh, when you see the different uh, rapid diagnostic tests, which are widely utilized in our country, including the ABON, with their respective prices, ADK, and determine, determine the rapid diagnostic tests which we use in our research programs, core tests, uh, BICA, and uh, ESO tests, these uh, kits are being used in my public hospital and the public hospital St. Louis Hospital, and the costs are around $0.7 per test. And private hospitals also do rapid diagnostic, uh, conduct rapid diagnostic tests, and the cost can go as high as $5. So uh, when it comes to the uh, hepatitis B e antigen as well as viral load testing, it's not being done in public hospitals. So it's uh, Mainly that in two large uh, private diagnostic laboratories, uh, Mongolia International Clinical Laboratory, uh, doing hepatitis A antigen at the cost of around ten dollars um, per test, and the end result can take as long as one month. Currently, they are not doing viral load. The, the, they do hepatitis B surface antigen ELISA test for um, the cost of ten thousand ten dollars uh, per test. The hepatitis E antigen testing also is done in actual medical laboratory, which costs around forty dollars. $40 and the test is being conducted in Dubai. And viral load testing can cost in the same laboratory around 117 US in the result can take as long as two weeks. So one of our research partners in Harar has tried to evaluate the validity of the three rapid diagnostic tests, which are Helgen, advanced quality, and determine against a gold standard ELISA. And in this uh, research, they found out that the sensitivity of all the three kits found to be 80.2 percent and the specificity of um, way beyond 98 percent. False negative results were observed among patients who have low titers of hepatitis surface antigen. So from this what they concluded was this can this rapid diagnosis cases can be utilized in clinical setting for patients who need treatment but cannot be recommended for protein screening of uh, blood donors. But when it comes to the hepatitis B reporting and the linkage into to the system, the WHO of uh, the five Cs are the principles that apply to all models of hepatitis testing in, the, um, in all settings. This includes consent, confidentiality, counseling, correct results, and connection to um, care. So, in our settings, our healthcare providers do not have um, formal training in giving pre tests as well as post test counseling and viral uh, uh, screening, and as well as uh, and this is usually the health care provider, which is mostly the physicians who do the pre-test and post-test counseling, although they, don't, they are not trained. And there is also a well-structured national system for linkage uh, of those who tested positive. Uh, it depends, it's a subject for the patient need as well as the treating physician whether to link it to private or public hospitals. So uh, when you see the hepatitis B virus evaluation and treatment, different uh, Battery of tests are recommended to be conducted in our national guideline, including viral load testing. But as I mentioned, viral load testing is not uh, available in public sectors. 
and the antigen testing is also a library. And TDF treatment, which is the first line treatment in our uh, national guideline, was brought to the public sector since 2016, but the major challenge had been the sustainability of the drug supply. There were oftentimes out patients were forced to interrupt their medication because of unavailability. And whenever it's available, there is a wide fluctuation in the cost of the drug ranging to five to six dollars per month. It says that treatment hormones are relatively scared, but we don't have uh, data to show, and uh, there is no visible sort of evidence in that cell available. And we don't have a way organized in the program in our country. So when we talk about model of success for hepatitis B treatment program, we talk about some process of the medical college, chronic hepatitis B treatment program, which was established in 2015 by the help of the Norwegian government. And this is the, this is the first biggest uh, chronic hepatitis B uh, uh, pilot treatment uh, pilot program. And in this uh, Program we have we have shown that antiviral therapy for hepatitis B can be realized in this clinic, good clinical as well as virological response. And early mortality was observed in those patients with the compensated cirrhosis and um, underlines the need for early testing as well as uh, timely insertion of antiviral therapy in Sub Saharan Africa. So, what are the major uh, hepatitis B care cascade challenges? As we all know, um, Globally, among those chronic uh, viral patients, patients, only 5% are screened, aware of their infections, and among those who are aware, 1% are on treatment. So the major challenge has been in our settings, lack of effective testing policies or national standards, weak or non-existent hepatitis surveillance programs, lack of national policies for use of licensed in vitro diagnostic tests, limited facilities or services for hepatitis testing in health insurance systems, Lack of trained manpower, absence of referral system, lack of sustainable drug supply, and absence of versatility of hepatitis B virus vaccine, and absence of monitoring and coalition system, lack of testing of patients who are lost from care, use of quality test kits and regions, and lack of financial uh, finance for the viral hepatitis program, unlike that of HIV, TB, and uh, malaria programs, have been a major challenge. And uh, what would be the key forward? And, uh, one should assess a national governance burden and one should establish a national governance structure and coordination mechanisms and develop evidence based national plan strategies and also set national targets and define indicators. And one should estimate the cost of implementing the, um, this program and mobilize the resource, allocate budgets, identify key stakeholders and partners, and remove legal and regulatory barriers. And, uh, and um, one should also in policies and practices that promote uh, a low stigmatization of patients and raise national awareness of my hepatitis program in general. So among the key inter core, the five core intervention areas uh, to end hepatitis B epidemics is timely administration of versions of hepatitis B vaccine for prevention of mother to child transmission. So, so when we see this uh, graph, which was uh, uh, when you see the report by uh, WHO in 2014, it is one of the among one of the nations who has not who had not included hepatitis B versus vaccine globally based on the WHO report. So, an elimination of hepatitis B infection as a public health threat uh, requires reduction in the prevalence of hepatitis B surface antigen to less than 0.1 percent in children and five years of age. So, this can only be achieved through the universal immunization of newborns and other interventions to prevent mother-to-child transmission, including hepatitis B versus administration and administration of uh, drugs for prevention of uh, mother-to-child transmission in mothers with same viral adverse based on the same condition as well. So when you see the current rates compared to the stated 2030 targets for hepatitis B virus elimination in Sub-Saharan Africa, as you can see clearly from this bar graph, the hepatitis versus uh, vaccine uh, Versus vaccine is way, way below 10 percent, which is far beyond the concept of target. And the infant hepatitis B virus series is uh, between 70 to 80 percent. It's, it's one of the uh, areas which has better performance. Um, but the hepatitis B diagnosis in Sub Saharan Africa is nearly uh, uh, non existent. And the hepatitis B treatment is also way below 10 percent. So 
these major areas needs uh, specified um, intensified attention in uh, urgent actions. So in Ethiopia, any community violation of uh, administration of birth rules of hepatitis B vaccine was recently done. And based on this economic analysis, uh, administration of birth rules of hepatitis B uh, vaccine was found to be cost effective. And uh, the prevalence of hepatitis B virus infection among pregnant mothers is 5% in our city. So among our, uh, from our research outputs, we have clearly shown that a majority of the patients with chronic hepatitis B were found to be less than 40 years of age, younger age groups, and ones that had significant fibrosis, among whom 17.4% had cirrhosis. And from the one year result of our um, pilot program, early diagnosis of chronic hepatitis B through um, improved testing has shown to improve degree of liver damage. And also treatment of chronic TPD uh, was found to be successful in terms of adherence to therapy, retention in care, improvement in liver sickness, and the viral dose suppression. And as you all, as we all know, that one of the bottlenecks for uh, implementation of the chronic hepatitis treatment program is uh, viral load testing. So we, in our research, we have tried to use, try to see the value of point of care viral load testing using um, gene expert. So gene expert was found to have sensitivity of 94%, this is 71%. So from this, it has been concluded that gene expert has demonstrated good validity for measurement of hepatitis B viral load testing in resource constrained, constrained areas, like in the Sub-Saharan Africa. We have also tried to use the reliability of dry blood spots for the measurement of uh, viral load testing. Since the majority of rural in, in the population in Sub Saharan Africa lives in the rural area, which is far away from major regional laboratories. So, in this uh, uh, research, we found that it is to be feasible and viable alternative to plasma for quantification of hepatitis B virus in, in these settings. So, with this, that, with this research output, we do believe that this research output's findings can be widely extrapolated to the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa and can largely inform governments and policy makers in rolling out out of hepatitis B treatment programs to achieve the 2013 uh, WHO goals. So finally, outcomes to the uh, possible uh, hepatitis B operational research opportunities in the future. So one should define uh, the population in location that are most affected in the required intensive support. And the other area of research could be uh, would be economic analysis of subsequent scale of chronic hepatitis B treatment programs as we have conducted the pilot programs. This can easily be done and economic analysis uh, should be the subsequent uh, next step to do. And evaluation and comparison of different hepatitis B testing approach, which is universal routine and population based testing versus focused risk based testing, and as well as antenatal core testing, should be evaluated and using different services to evaluate whether it's likely in the community or using this facility based testing. And the other area of opportunity would be in the research areas into the simplification of testing and uh, in testing care and integration of this hepatitis B. Testing and treatment with other health services. And the other uh, uh, area of research should be evaluation of uh, diagnostic performance of the different rapid diagnostic tests for hepatitis B surface antigen. So, with this, I would come to conclude my presentation. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, Dr. Hanna, for the excellent comprehensive presentation. Are you available um, to come off mute and on video for a moment? Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Hanna, there was a few questions in the chat box uh, really focusing on the PMT PMTCT cascade and prevention of uh, vertical transmission. And you've pointed to a few policies that really promote um, uh, prevention efforts in Ethiopia, but a large gap in actually implementing antenatal testing, as well as birth dose vaccination. From a patient's perspective, can you describe what are some of the barriers that uh, mothers may face uh, when going to facilities um, uh, for testing and prevention? And how, you, how, from your perspective as a clinician or a researcher, could potentially address some of those challenges? Okay. 
Uh, first of all, the, in terms of the antenatal care uh, services, the Ministry of Health has developed a draft guideline on the testing of hepatitis B from pregnant mothers. It's, the, it's just a draft, and uh, which includes also administration of the dose of vaccine in the future. And so it's uh, during antenatal, the major challenge for pregnant mothers during antenatal care follow up would be. Uh, uh, awareness of healthcare workers themselves uh, to test and link these mothers to uh, care. So, training of healthcare workers in all areas, not only urban and rural areas, should uh, is one of the major challenges. So, it, it is depicted one that from the guideline to say that all pregnancies. Hepatitis B virus infection during antenatal care for us. But what is being done routinely is uh, from my colleagues, what I learned from my colleagues, not based on that, is that the routine ones like hepatitis B, um, hemoglobin, blood group, RH factor, VDR, and uh, HIV testings. So there is still a gap in testing of hepatitis B virus in those mothers who are having antenatal care for us. Uh, this hepatitis B testing is mainly being done in urban areas. So there is a major gap in terms of uh, offering testing for the pregnant mothers as well, as I can see. So this has to do with, to do with uh, uh, training of healthcare workers, awareness of healthcare workers. So we have to question uh, healthcare workers who are also following the antenatal care follow-ups. So training should be provided for healthcare workers, first of all. We should raise awareness among the healthcare workers in uh, universal uh, masters can be realized. And subsequently, uh, what what should be the next uh, step if the mother tests positive? Where to link? And what are the possible interventions during the delivery? So, uh, in major hospitals, even patient mothers will be requested to buy immunoglobulin or words of 100. 100 USDs and getting the monovalent dependent B vaccine is a major challenge. It, it depends on the awareness of even the treating physician, whether to provide the immunoglobin or whether to provide the virus of vaccine. So I raise up the workers and to work on the universal antenatal care coverage in the country as well as testing of the Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you, Dr. Hanna. That's um, uh, very um, important details. I think there's so many questions we could dig into um, there deeper, but if you can maybe um, uh, give more comments in the chat box or respond to some of the questions, uh, it'll give a chance for more discussion. Just want to move on to our last speaker here. Um, uh, we'll be hearing from uh, Mr. Emmanuel Nyama as well as Mohamed Soare, who are both community health officers actually in uh, a very rural district of Sierra Leone and work with the organization Partners in Health in establishing a hepatitis B program. So uh, the floor is uh, over to them. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning, good afternoon um, across the globe. I am Mohamed Suare, a community health officer working with uh, Partners in Health in community um, I am here with colleagues, uh, but they will introduce themselves as we go along the program. Hi, everyone. I am Emmanuel Temwendo Nyama, a community health officer uh, working for Partners in Health in Connor District, eastern part of the country. Uh, Partners in Health is a non governmental organization that is uh, working for health, strengthening the health system in partnership with the government and helping the vulnerable people in the society. So, hello, uh, this is Marta Patino. I am the internal medicine doctor working for Partners in Health and coordinating all the hepatitis B program. Yeah, so we can dive into the program or the presentation proper. So before we go further, we I want to just give you the kind of uh, status of hepatitis B in our country in general. So Sierra Leone has a population of 7.6 million people with a life expectancy of 53.9 uh, and then the fertility rate in children is like 4.3%. 
So we want to like give you exactly the, the kind of a body you know, or the kind of prevalence of hepatitis B in our country. As uh, various studies have suggested or have shown that uh, the prevalence of hepatitis B is high. In general, it is above 10% um, of our, our population. So, so we want to talk about the, 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 the strategies we are implementing in order for us to tackle the, 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 the hepatitis B. So the government and together with, so the government together with um, development partners or whatsoever, they've tried to like put in vaccination as part of uh, the protocol, which was introduced in 2007 to ensuring that uh, people that were born or that are now born can be vaccinated. But you can imagine this gap that has been created for far too long before the introduction of uh, this uh, vaccine, the kind of gaps, especially for children, uh, uh, women now in the reproductive age that uh, have not been vaccinated. So imagine the kind of uh, gaps that has been created. So we also want to talk about slide five. So, so um, as you can see, well, we are dealing with a national guideline or a protocol that we that is accepted all over the, uh, the, the world. We are using a, a kind of first-hand diagnosis tool in our country because we all know that uh, the prevalence of the hepatitis B in our country is too high. So we are like using just a single uh, test for our diagnosis purpose. So you also may want to like see the 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 the, the, the reality or the, the challenges we are faced with in terms of diagnosing this uh, patient. Yeah, so we are expecting people to pass through this kind of a challenge. Uh, entry point into the care, but it's challenging because we, what we are expecting to be done is not done due to the several challenges with uh, transportation, linkage to the service and all those things. So you see our country is a very poor country with a population that is like 60% of the country population is poor and they're living uh, below the poverty margin that is one point uh, one dollar a day. So they cannot afford to uh, provide themselves this kind of a service. Yeah, uh, but the hepatitis B care is also part of this, the, that the government is not financing. We have a government that is just financing few health care services like malaria, like TB, like um, HIV, and the name services and all. But you see the majority of the people or the population are left out. So even though if uh, we have the technical know-how, we have the, uh, the, the the kind of support we need, but we cannot afford, people cannot afford to access the care because of the poverty level. So uh, as we go along the line, we want to like um, for our colleagues to come in and do the presentation about the status of hepatitis B or how our clinic operates in Kono District. So um, this is the reason because of the and the poor economic status of the country that partners in health and uh, partnership with the government uh, decided to open the first free hepatitis B clinic in the country since April 2019. So partners in health operating Connor District, as you can see from the slide. Now Connor District is a part, is a district in the part of the eastern part of the country. And we have a catchment population of around 500,000 people and uh, with only one secondary hospital or uh, secondary facility where the hepatitis B clinic is located and 97 primary facilities, uh, 11 chip dome, 11, uh, sorry, 15 chip dome, 11 community health centers. It may interest you to know that 75% of all these uh, population live in the rural areas. So the, the eye is a big challenge for them to access a clinic because uh, 
those rural areas have poor road network and most of them use a motorcycle as a means of transportation to access care. So there is a big problem for them to access the care because of the poor economic status. So some people to take over more than two hours to access care. And this impedes the, the, their accessibility to the clinic in the hospital. So the next slide you see is telling you about uh, the hepatitis B reporting and linkage system, uh, care, the care cascade we give to our to our patient. You see, and the first thing there is that uh, whenever a diagnosis is made or a patient is referred, they are given an appointment in the clinic, given a date, and in the time of giving the date, we brought uh, an innovation, which is a diagnostic or evaluation package wherein the individual is given uh, laboratory investigations and uh, ultrasound image uh, request form to do all the evaluations before coming for the first visit. Uh, in the first visit, the individual undergoes evaluation, counseling, and then starts immediately on treatment if the individual meets the criteria for treatment. This initiative alone has uh, increased uh, the adherence of care for a patient to the clinic. Uh, the pictures I'm sharing with you uh, tells you about how the clinic runs, how the clinic runs. Uh, the first picture you see on the far left there, up left, is uh, the entrance into the clinic. Um, bottom to that is that um, a consultation room or an examination room with uh, Dr. Chembe, one of the doctors that has been working with us here, but is no longer here. And next to him is a nurse Kumba, who is one of the nurses in the clinic. And then uh, at my far button left is uh, the register where the patient is registered and linked in the clinic. You see a picture of uh, the laboratory result of the viral load, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide. And then in the next picture, you see a pharmacy technician providing a tenofovir to a patient with indication of treatment. So it may, before I forget is that uh, the clinic is part of the non-communicable disease clinic in the hospital. And the team consists of one medical doctor and two community health officers, four nurses, uh, one M&E officer, and one clerk. So the slide you see here is telling you about the testing cascade we use in a clinic. So um, on the far left, there is uh, a rapid test we use to detect hepatitis B surface antigen. And also the why we are using is that the test, the test is so cheap and also has high sensitivity and specificity value. And as well as a, uh, the testing cascade, we have introduced uh, the, since 2019, we introduced the hepatitis B via route in the algorithm of treatment of hepatitis B based on WHO guidelines. So you see that the viral load has helped in the accuracy of treatment, particularly if uh, the individual, if we are comparing it with abnormal ALT level when we know that the ALT level can be abnormal in many conditions. And as well also it, it improve our judgment, particularly at initial visit, if it is elevated with elevated ALT level, we start the patient on treatment immediately despite other findings. Also in the, in the last bottom there, the picture you see is the hepatitis B serology kit or panel which we use uh, for our patients, most of them who are adolescent or below 30 years of age. We use it to, to see whether they are in the, the immunotolerance phase to see whether the hepatitis B early antigen is positive or not. So in the clinic, we have main areas or sources of our patients where patients are referred from other places to assess the clinic. Uh, in, in, 20, in 2020 April is that at the outpatient department uh, took the chunk of the patient that we are referred to us, 60.8% of patients that, are, that we are referred to us came from the OPD. And some are coming from discharges in the world, external clinic, ANC, 
HIV and TB clinic and also in the blood bank. But uh, I want to I want to let you know that uh, there is no proper uh, screening program, particularly for key populations that are affected with uh, HIV hepatitis B, and also there is not that good linkage system into the clinic. And also, most of our patients don't know why they are coming to the clinic. And a small number of them will tell you that um, I have a liver condition, but it would be interesting to note that no one will tell you that I have hepatitis B infection. So the next slide you see here is talking about the evaluation and the treatment cascades uh, in terms of hepatitis B management in the clinic. So we see the eligibility criteria for a patient to start treatment is based on one, the ultrasound finding and the APRES score. If on the ultrasound finding there is evidence of cirrhosis and also the APRES score is greater than two, if the cirrhosis either decompensated or not, we start the individual on treatment. Also, if the patient is co-infected with HIV or hepatitis C is a criteria for treatment, and also, if a patient has a viral load greater than 20,000 with a persistent abnormal ALT level, we put the individual on treatment. For pregnant mothers, if they have viral load greater than 200,000 and also they have a hepatitis B early antigen that is positive, we put them on treatment. For the follow up, we check in terms of adherence to treatment and also check the urine creatinine level every six months uh, for patients not on treatment and then patient on treatment we check the viral load every 12 months. So the slide you see is a follow-up for patient not on treatment. What we do is that we review the patient based on ALT level and viral load. So this slide tells you about that. And also in terms of vaccination is that there is no, there is no dose vaccine or national guidelines for vaccination for babies born to hepatitis B positive mothers. There is no hepatitis B screening program in the antenatal care unit nationally. So in the clinic, what we are doing is that our positive mothers is that uh, we have started uh, vaccinating the babies born to positive mothers in the last eight months. So to give uh, the first dose of uh, vaccine to babies born positive mothers in the last eight months, we are using the vaccines that we are left from the campaign we did, the hepatitis B campaign we did one year ago to vaccinate the babies born to positive mothers. So the challenges we have, as I, I mentioned earlier, is that uh, there is no national program for vaccination of uh, babies born to positive mothers and also we, there is not that proper linkage system and follow up from the clinic to see who uh, those babies that are born are either vaccinated or not. Our future vision is that we would like to do a universal vaccination to all babies. Okay, we give a first dose of vaccination to all babies, despite the status, their hepatitis, their hepatitis status of their mothers, and then also continue with the program of prevention of mother to child transmission. So the next slide you see is a B evaluation and treatment. In terms of uh, these are specific groups of patients we are deciding to be putting on treatment in the future. So those with abnormal ALT level greater than 80 and viral load between 2000 and 20,000 and then their April score is greater than five. Because we found out that some of these patients with April score between uh, two and 1.5 already have evidence of cirrhosis, but we are not putting on treatment. So we want to put this patient on treatment in the near future. And also in terms of the children, we want to be using criteria like if you have uh, ALT level, 1.3 times the upper limit of normal, at least six months with uh, high viral load and also if you have a high viral load in during childhood greater than 1 million, we want to start putting this patient on treatment. 
the slide you see is talking about uh, the data we recorded in April 2020 about a patient with foot on treatment. We have uh, 3,351 patients. Out of this, 12.8% were are placed on treatment, which constitute 45 patients. 7.1% of these uh, diagnosis uh, for, for this indication of treatment was based on ultrasound finding. 53.3% was uh, April score, which was two and above. And then also those who have both April score and ultrasound findings were at 24.4%. Uh, those who were successfully initiated on treatment were 8.2. Out of this, there, there was no one hospitalized. And then those who are retained on treatment, 94.6%, and they are still on treatment. The next we want to talk about is the hepatitis B care cascade challenges. Is that uh, in terms of screening, no systematic screening for key populations. Uh, no national program for, for prevention of modern child in terms of transmission of hepatitis B, and no systematic tracking system to ensure all the positive patients that uh, may be referred from other areas are coming to the clinic or not. And also in terms of the linkage, we don't have a systematic linkage system from the areas of screening, the blood bank, the ANC, the outpatient with the clinic. And, no referral system, particularly from other districts and facilities in our district to send patients to our clinic. There is not that a proper referral system. And there is no tracking system or a linkage system for patients to, to relink them, those who are on follow up, those who are out of follow up. There is no that proper system. And we also lack a systematic evaluation of patients that meet the vulnerability criteria. So, also, you see that the hepatitis B cascade of care challenge. The challenge is here is that in terms of treatments, we are we still don't have accuracy of indication of treatment based on the cardiac we are using the ultrasound and the April score. We do, we we don't have we we don't know if it is accurate or not because. Uh, we don't have a fibro scan which could help us to say that yeah, this is cirrhosis or not. And then also we have patients that are on treatment with, that comes with GI bleeding. We don't have endoscopy to know whether they are, they, they are, the source of their GI bleeding is from the cirrhosis or from other causes. And also there is delay in supply of Recently, we just got a new supply. We are out of supply for over the last four months. This also uh, creates a big problem in terms of deciding, the, uh, de deciding whether the patient should start medication or not. And then we don't have uh, intercover for children to start treatment, but which we are sure of having in the next few months to come to start our children on treatment. And then also, it may interest you to know that high number of these uh, patients are uneducated. So we find it difficult to explain the cause of the disease, the consequence of not following up, not adhering to treatment and not coming for follow-up. And then we will, in, the, in terms of decentralization, to see that what we are doing is disseminated to other districts is a big challenge. In terms of immunization, as I've said earlier, there is no national policy for giving first dose of vaccination to babies born to positive mothers and no national policy for close contact of positive patients. And I will tell you this, that there is no sensitization going on in the country about the hepatitis B clinic, except where, where we work in Connaught District. And lastly, I will like to end with these operational research opportunities. Uh, in terms of development of prevention to modern, uh, prevention of modern to child transmission program in hepatitis B, and then accuracy of April score or the use of ultrasound finding in terms of identifying cirrhosis uh, in, without the use of what, a fibro scan. If you use a fibro scan and use these two, which one is more accurate? And then identification of prevalence of hepatitis B in key population, especially pre uh, pregnant mothers and then uh, children below age of five, and then prevalence of hepatitis B in primary contact of positive population, and then also the implementation of follow-up program with the participation of community-based program to prevent loss of blow-up and then identify complications. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you have uh, questions, you can let us know where you don't understand. We can help you clarify. Thank you so much, um, Soare and Yama, for the excellent um, presentation from Sierra Leone. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to invite our final speaker, um, who's Dr. Kasimir Manzengo. Um, Dr. Kasimir, you can come off uh, mute and on video. Uh, Dr. Manzengo is a medical advisor at the WHO Africa Regional Office, and he's also the acting regional hepatitis advisor uh, for the regional office in um, uh, Afro region. Um, so Dr. Kasimir, um, we'd love to hear your reflections on these presentations um, and some of the challenges that were um, highlighted by the different speakers um, and, and some of the common challenges that they face uh, in countries in the region. Um, also with your experience um, more broadly um, from both a policy and uh, implementation uh, perspective. Um, so Dr. Kasmir, we'd love to hear your, uh, your comments and reflections. Um, the floor is yours, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my brother, good for, for, the, for, this, for, for the floor. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm very impressed by uh, all the presentation done today. And uh, I would like first to thank uh, Global Coalition for Hepatitis Elimination to organize this uh, very impressive uh, webinar. And I would also to highlight the fact that uh, we have now a, a momentum for pushing hepatitis program with what, and particularly in Africa region. I can see presentation from a public health uh, actor uh, mixed with uh, clinicians, and uh, finally the community actor presentation. So I think that uh, all together we can go ahead with uh, uh, to end hepatitis, uh, hepatitis disease. Uh, to, towards 2030. Uh, I think that uh, the, the, the point, the common point for all this presentation, we can see that uh, the integration, uh, uh, the integration of uh, hep B testing in uh, the antenatal care package is very important uh, in order to implement the triple elimination. Uh, I see that we can, uh, I can, I can see that uh, many activities are, da, are, uh, are, are being done in many countries, but uh, to become sustainable, we have to uh, integrate in uh, uh, triple elimination in order to go ahead. So, uh, as you know, uh, for uh, the elimination, we are now working on uh, uh, the hepatitis elimination and the, the, uh, the hep, hep BV uh, elimination uh, for, for, from mother to, to the child is a very important point for Africa. We have to reach the target of 0.1% uh, as highlighted the professor Anna from uh, Ethiopia is very, Ethiopia is very important for us with a milestone on, uh, or, 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 uh, of 1% in 2025. The big challenge, I think, uh, from my perspective, and uh, to, to, to see globally uh, uh, those things, those challenges, I think that it is the lack of funding in, uh, is the major, major challenge worldwide for hepatitis program and uh, triple elimination. So we have to capitalize the opportunities we have now uh, before going to the full resource mobilization. For now, I think one of uh, opportunities is, uh, opportunity is the integration in the existing program uh, uh, like uh, uh, antenatal care service. Uh, you saw in some presentation that uh, worldwide we have uh, a coverage of uh, uh, 82%. So it is for us uh, a big entry, port, entry door to implement 
testing uh, for, her mother, for her mothers. Also to integrate in uh, HIV program, uh, uh, lab aspects and uh, 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 PSM, procurement uh, supply management, human resources, uh, Informa information, strategic information, and also community awareness. For for those 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 uh, all all those things are now uh, coverage by uh, the program of PMTCT for HIV. So we can take this opportunity to implement to implement our activities in uh, the, the the PMTCT. Exist, uh, 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 which are now developed, implementing in many countries. So it can be for us uh, a big opportunity. We have some uh, uh, funding from uh, Global Fund, PEPFAR for uh, uh, dual, dual elimination. And uh, we are, uh, it is possible to, just to add uh, just uh, the testing for hep hep hepatitis. And uh, concerning the, um, the research, uh, the research program, we have uh, uh, to work on the, uh, to see how, how uh, we can improve the mother, mother, newborn and child adolescent health with uh, uh, the triple, by, by the triple elimination. But also we have to uh, lead many impact studies like I saw from Ethiopia, to see uh, what is the impact of the triple elimination uh, on the maternal uh, mortality, mortality in Africa. It, is, it, it would be uh, a big uh, argument uh, in the country to mobilize, uh, to continue to mobilize uh, partners and uh, money also. My dream, at this stage, it's that HEP, HEP BV, uh, the, the HEP, the mater, HEP BV maternal to child transmission elimination should, should help us to accelerate the triple elimination in Africa because we, be, we began, uh, we began, we begin the process of dual elimination from 2010, but until now, no country is uh, reached this uh, this uh, objective, this, uh, this goal. So it is a big opportunity for us as a hepatitis actor to push things to help to develop uh, services of uh, internal care to integrate our activities on uh, the PMTCT and push to the triple effective elimination. In, Af in Africa for HIV, syphilis, and hepatitis. It is my big dream now at this stage, and I encourage all of us to, to keep the momentum and going ahead with our vision, with our efforts, our mobilization, and our advocacy. I think that we are near to make it a real situation. Thank you very much. To hear me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Casimir, for the um, inspiring words uh, and leadership from, from Afro. Dr. Casimir, I think there's one follow up question. Um, we haven't, uh, as you're discussing integration with ANC, HIV, PMTCT platforms, uh, there's a new platform in which we can integrate, um, and that's the COVID 19 um, testing. Can you uh, just comment on any approaches that you've seen in terms of leveraging the COVID-19 um, uh, response for improved hepatitis B uh, testing coverage? Yes, of course. Uh, COVID is uh, a, a, a big problem now in Africa, but it is also an opportunity opportunity to mobilize money and to, to orient money in the health sector in Africa. One of the points we can uh, uh, use is that uh, uh, is the technologies, because uh, with uh, COVID, uh, partners are ready now to fund, uh, uh, to, 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 to pay some uh, uh, gene expert machine 
uh, in uh, to help uh, uh, to help countries to um, uh, to perform that diagnosis, but not only for COVID, also for HIV, for TB, TB, TB and uh, hepatitis. I was impressed to when I was in charge to see how GeneSpect can be used uh, and, uh, and, dif, dif, uh, and dif, uh, independently uh, for HIV, for TB, for hepatitis, and for COVID. I think that we can take this like uh, an opportunity to go ahead. Uh, uh, and uh, for um, uh, after this, we can, uh, with COVID, we have uh, many opportunities because uh, we have uh, partners who are funding now the health, uh, the health serv services and uh, new approach, differentiated uh, uh, approach like uh, treatment, patient treatment, patient diagnosis for hepatitis in many countries. So we have uh, not only to consider, to consider COVID like uh, a treat, a treat, but also an opportunity, as you say, and many, many doors are open for us to go ahead this year uh, through the COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Dr. Casimir. And I think those are excellent um, uh, words, thoughts, ideas, and a vision uh, to achieve in, in coming out of this webinar. Uh, we hope that this has um, really spurred some uh, some interesting discussion and questions in your own um, areas of work uh, to our audience members. And we look forward to collaborating with you here from the Coalition of Global Hepatitis Elimination in the future on your own projects and programs and always uh, open to um, supporting those as, uh, as much as we can. So thank you again. And I'm going to pass to Dr. Ward for um, uh, a final message. Yeah. Thank you, Neil. Thanks again to all the speakers and to Dr. Casimir uh, for uh, presenting their work um, and their perspectives in such an open and transparent way. It's so important for us to um, know the status of the progress toward elimination and the challenges. And I think we got a good, very good um, 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 introduction to, to those. Uh, in these three countries. And we look forward to looking for opportunities to advance progress in these three countries, learn more about other countries in Africa through uh, sharing uh, lessons learned uh, in this community of practice that the coalition represents. Uh, and uh, through that building capacity to, um, to improve prevention, testing and treatment. Uh, once again, uh, all of the information uh, related to this webinar will be on the coalition website at globalhep.org. Um, um, please fill out the evaluation um, that's uh, here so we can um, continue to improve this webinar series. I want to thank uh, Abbott Laboratories for the support of this HEP test webinar series. Uh, please also um, continue to um, discuss uh, uh, aspects of hepatitis elimination with us directly, you can uh, email me at jward at taskforce.org, as well as my other colleagues, uh, such as Dr. Neil Gupta. Uh, and we look forward to working with all of you um, in the future. Uh, thank you again for joining uh, this HEP test webinar. Uh, have a good evening and good day. Bye-bye.